Hello friends. It is wonderful to be able to bring this prepared message for you all on this Sunday. Um, I hope you are that you are doing well um, and that continuing to care for yourself, to care for your loved ones, um, and doing things that, that you enjoy that bring you peace and and happiness in the midst of this uncertainty and and this pandemic and these kind of chaotic times, um, it is very important to to pause, to check in with what's happening in our bodies, what's happening with our spirit. And it's important to to be reminded of that. I know I myself was having a conversation this week with a a, a friend and a mentor, and she asked me some questions, um, and I just went, yes. I don't know the last time that I have paused, <laughs> that I have taken my time of centering and, and listened to what is happening um, and where spirit is moving. So I hope that you are able to do that in whatever way that you connect with God because um, it, is, it is very important right now. Um, and I hope that we can all do that, even when we aren't able to to gather and to commune together. Um, I do not have a sermon title for this message this week, um, but the scripture I will be reading comes from Matthew, and it is Matthew 14, 22 through 33. So I will actually be reading from the NRSV translation, um, if you care to follow along. And I will also add a caveat. I'm in a little different location. I'm in, at my home recording this sermon. So um, Ava Gray is in her room, hopefully cleaning her room, but you might hear some singing from her in the background. Um, she's already tried to come in before on a previous recording that I tried, so hopefully <laughs> she won't do that this time. But if she does, that that is Ava Gray, and she is excited. So um, our scripture today comes from Matthew, Matthew 14, 22 through 23, and it states, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. So I feel like I should be honest, a little vulnerable, and disclose a little something to you. I struggled a little bit in writing and preparing and thinking about my message for this week. I started classes back for my final year at Wake Divinity um, this past week, and Ava Gray started kindergarten, which is crazy, a little overwhelming and sad, but wonderful, at High Point Friends School. So we've had a week of adjusting and figuring out online classes and what our new routine is and, and all of those wonderful things right now that we're all trying to, to juggle. But I've been working the past... I work at High Point Friends Meeting, and I do a lot of work with the school. And so I've been working um, these past couple months, and particularly these past couple weeks, in helping staff transition to in-person learning, to help staff and students 
deal with their own stress and their own anxiety in the midst of this pandemic. And so a couple weeks ago, we, myself and the counselor at High Point Friends School, led an orientation for staff. So we, through ritual and through centering and processing and writing, we tried to allow a space for staff to name all their hopes and their anxieties and everything that they were bringing into this school year. And it was wonderful. It was wonderful conversation. And I thought, you know, I've been doing this work. I've been talking to colleagues and to friends and feeling the spirit move in such wonderful and powerful ways. Talking about people having that revitalized sense of purpose. And I thought, surely this sermon's going to come. Surely Spirit's going to continue to move in that same awesome way that I've been experiencing. Didn't, didn't really happen like that, you know. And because <laughs> Spirit doesn't always move right when or how we want it to. And I know as I say that, you're probably going, yeah, duh. Like, we already knew that. Our lives and our experiences have taught us that much. But I often find myself having to relearn that fact over and over. Maybe you're the same way or maybe you're not. But for me, I'm continually surprised by it. Like, oh, that didn't go how I expected it to, but this is pretty awesome too. Maybe even a little bit better. As a member at High Point Friends, meeting reminded me of recently, we make plans and God laughs. And these past five months have been a constant reminder of that, of canceled plans and readjusting and relearning and being creative, it's been a constant reminder. And I usually begin our time together before I start my message with a moment of centering. And I'm going to do that, but just a little bit differently today. So I'm going to ask you to get in a comfortable position, whether that's feet on the floor, hands in lap, whether you want to sit cross-legged in a chair on the floor, however is comfortable to you. So find your comfortable space, a space that breath can flow and move through your body. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. Close your eyes and imagine. Imagine your favorite place in the whole world. Imagine that place that offers you comfort and safety. Is it your home? The place where you now reside? Is it your grandmother's house growing up with a warm sweet cake baking in the oven? Is it in the arms of a friend? Is it the beach with the waves crashing on your feet? Is it the deep, comforting silence of the woods? Whatever that place is to you, imagine it now. Allow the thought to wrap itself around you, to invade your being. Notice what feelings arise. Notice how your body feels in this moment. Allow it to offer a bit of solace in this chaotic world. Now, imagine you are not in that safe place. Imagine that there is 
a cliff. And you can see from a distance and you are moving ever closer and closer to it. You look around, but there is no help in sight. You scream, but find your voice trapped in your lungs. There's nowhere to go, no one to help. Notice how your body feels. Notice its changes from your safe place. Perhaps as I described the scenario, your shoulders tensed, your eyes squeezed, your fists clenched, whatever, however your body reacted, notice it. Now breathe and allow yourself to venture back into safety. Before we exit this time, Bring that safe and comforting place back into your mind. Exhale and know that all is well. Let me open your eyes. Fear is such a powerful motivator. Our bodies physically react to it. Our evolutionary and God-created instinct is to either freeze, fight, or run away from whatever is bombarding us. Fear is a weapon. And if it, it is one that, if we're not careful, can easily and quickly be used against us. That is, if we aren't capable of pausing, of pausing and returning. I read at the start of this message today a passage from Matthew, and I love this scripture and its message. I feel like it's been a long time since I've spoken on a miracle of Jesus, um, but this one in particular happens immediately after the feeding of the 5,000. And these two miracles, the feeding of the 5,000 and Jesus walking on water, are the only two found in all four Gospels. And each Gospel writer kind of tells their own version, this version of Jesus taking care and feeding thousands of people, and Jesus calmly walking on water in the midst of a storm to get to his people, to his friends, to his followers. And I can't help but wonder Maybe that's because these are important. Maybe it's because it, they really stuck in the minds of the, all four of these writers. Maybe it's like that lesson that I have to learn over and over and over again, where God's going, do you, do you have it yet? You got it? Maybe we have to hear it over and over again to fully understand or to take in all that this passage this miracle this Jesus is giving to us one of my professors shared a story about a friend of his a friend that grew up in the rural Midwest in the 1950s and as school was a good deal of distance away from most students farmland homes and those Minnesota winters could pound snow down upon a town, each student had to have what they called a storm home. And what a storm home was, was a family close to the school that agreed to take the child in. In the event that a storm arose while they were at school and they couldn't get home or safely make the journey back home. And my professor shared how this individual would often think about his storm home in those long cold winter days he would imagine what it was like what these people were like do they have kids of their own do they have pets is it a big house it will have a comfy big bed to sleep in they need to make up scenarios i bet they make the best sweets. And I bet they make soups that warm you down to your toes. 
I bet they have a big fluffy dog that will play with me and lay beside me as I fall asleep. As he let his mind create this image of a people and a place that would embrace him in the event of emergency, he found himself being comforted. And he never actually had to use his storm home, but said the thought of it was enough. When we read this scripture, this miracle of Jesus walking on the water, we typically focus on the actions and the person of Peter. We ask ourselves, would I have the courage to get out of the boat? Would my faith be strong enough to keep my feet sure and strong in treacherous water? However, today, I want to focus on the actions of Jesus. The actions of the one who lived in such a way to continually call others into God's presence. The one whom, in our following, we are called to become more like. Jesus has just performed a great miracle in that feeding of the 5,000. He's probably tired. He probably took a lot of, a lot of energy, a lot of effort. And the introvert in me totally gets what Christ does next and countless other times across the gospel. He goes, I need a time out. I got to be alone. I've been surrounded by people. I've been leading. I need a break. I need a recharge. And we are told he goes alone and prays. And then with his friends across the sea, being battered by waves, he calmly gets up and sets off across that sea. Imagine that. Imagine yourself on that boat. What would your thoughts have been when you saw that? Scripture tells us that the disciples cried out in fear upon seeing Jesus. They were terrified and I probably would have been too. Because first of all, I'm a little scared of the ocean, of its power and kind of intimidating. And even playing in the waves with Ava over this summer, I kept thinking, oh goodness, what if there's a riptide? Or what if Ava gets stung by a jellyfish? What if I can't hold on to her and a wave takes her? Or what if there's a shark nearby that bites us? I mean, all of these scenarios kept running around in my head. Fear, worry, anxiety can overwhelm us. They cloud our sight and inhibit us from seeing the miracle before us. Of seeing Christ in the storm. Calmly walking toward us and reminding us, Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. This statement by Christ is a reference to the Old Testament when God says to Moses, I am who I am. It is I. I have been sent to you. Do not be afraid because God is in your midst. Even when you don't fully understand it or can't see it or can't feel spirit moving, God surrounds you. These days seem full of fear. In this pandemic, in this constant news cycle that I find myself needing to limit and to just turn off sometimes, in this coming election, in the Black Lives Matter movement, in this constant political ads that we see, there's a lot of fear. But please remember, Christ calls to us to not be afraid, to not let fear cloud our judgment, but to seek reason, to seek faith, to call out to him, to reach out for him, 
Just as Christ prepares himself before his journey onto the water and calmly comes to his disciples, we too can prepare ourselves. We can live by Christ's example to take rest, even for just a moment. To calm our minds, to calm our spirits, to conjure up that image of our storm home, of our place of refuge, of safety, and of strength. And if we choose from that state of calm, not to act out of fear, maybe then we can visualize the miracle coming toward us. Because Christ is calling, my friends. Christ is walking before us on the open sea, guiding us to a new world and a new hope. And before we can step out of that boat, we have to let go of our fear. Whatever that fear may be, we all have it. We all have something. Whether it's fear of other, fear of lack of safety, fear of what we don't fully understand. We all have something. And let us not listen to those who call out to us, be afraid. Look what's happening in this world. It's terrifying. I can help. I have the answer. Let us not listen to those who profit on inciting fear. This is not the way of God. This is not what the Christ of the Bible shows us. But instead, let us cling to the Christ who reminds us to return calmly to the God who reaches out to us. We must continually return to our peace our peace in Jesus Christ that lives in and embodies restorative love, not fear. Take heart. It is I. Do not be 